Johnny, are you satisfied with the sales of the Airbus A380? Well, no salesman is ever completely satisfied, but uh, we've sold 257 of them. Uh, we're going to deliver about 30 this year and about the same number next year. It's a $350 million airplane, but it offers a lot to the market. You know, when this airplane takes off out of Frankfurt, it's probably behind a 747. It's got 150 passengers more on board. They're sitting in bigger seats with more comfort. It's consuming 20% less fuel, and on that takeoff, it's making half the noise. Where do you see most demand coming from? Well, demand for aircraft uh, is around the world. There are three mega markets right now. You've got Asia Pacific, the US, and Western Europe. They all have about 27, 28% of the world market for air travel. But in 20 years, that's going to shift dramatically. About a third is going to be in Asia Pacific, about 24% in Europe, and only 20% in the United States. Now the pie is going to be much bigger. It's going to be about two and a half times larger than it is today. So 40% of our aircraft are still going to be sold in the US and Western Europe. But the biggest market is going to be out there in Asia Pacific. How important is the cargo market for your Airbus sales? You can make a lot of money flying 100 tons, 120 tons of freight from China to the United States. But you'll make less than 10% of that money flying back because what is the U.S. actually shipping back to China? Maybe some flowers or a few things like that. The airplanes come back essentially empty. So one of the real waves of the future is going to be medium-sized freighters. We brought out our A330-200 freighter, 65 to 70 tons. So you can optimize it for that medium regional flying, which tends to be bi-directional. If you're flying around Asia, it's bi-directional. You bring freight down to Vietnam, you bring freight up from Vietnam, from Indonesia, over to Singapore, out to India, etc. Is there much competition from the brick market, say the Russians and the Chinese, with commercial aircraft? Well, uh, Russians I'm not too worried about because they really aren't that centrally controlled. But the way the Chinese market is centrally controlled, they've decided, uh, just like they've decided to build high-speed trains, decided to do a lot of things. They've decided that they're going to have a commercial aircraft industry. They're going to build an airplane in that 150 seat category to compete with our A320. Now, what they haven't quite figured out, or maybe they're just not saying that they, they know it, is that it takes at least 20 to maybe 30 years to be a major player in the market. It might cost you 10 billion to develop that airplane, but then it's one airplane. We have a family of single aisles, and so does Boeing. So then you have to stretch your single aisle aircraft, then you have to shrink it, make three or four versions of it. Then you have to have a small wide body twin, a larger wide body twin, maybe one day an aircraft like this. Now that's going to take at least 20 years. So if you say, am I worried about the Chinese being a major player? I say yes, in 20 years. If I'm worried in the next 10 years, the answer is no. And I'll give you another reason for that. I started uh, in 1985 with Airbus, January 1985. The company was founded in 1970. By 1985, we had one, maybe two airplanes out talking about our single aisle. We were not considered a major player by anybody. We were, uh, one year, I think it was 92, 82 or 83, a couple years before, we had a negative order book. We had more cancellations than we sold airplanes. I think it was like 20 airplanes uh, sold and about 25 canceled. So we're talking about uh, last year we sold 1,600 aircraft. To become a major player like that in the market takes a lot of money, a lot of technology, and a lot of time. The Chinese have the money, and they have the time. The question is, do they have the technology? I think they'll, they'll buy it over the years. How much progress are you really making with the new biofuels? We are completely against using food crops for energy generation for aircraft. That's absolutely the wrong way to go. We shouldn't even be doing it in cars. We should be feeding people with what we grow on the land. But we're very you know, confident that there's a solution in algae out there. If you could go to tropical areas, you could get this green, uh, the scientists call a lot of things, pond scum, and it grows extremely fast. You know, it it's absorbs carbon dioxide, it generates oxygen, and you can squinch it down into fuel that burns in jet engines very easily. I think within 15 to 20 years, a good percentage of our jet fuel may come from this. But that's the future, not, uh, not crops. You mentioned at the Berlin Air Show here that there were some bottlenecks in production due to the availability 
of some of the components at the time. Are you able to increase production at all if you had a surge in increased demand now? Well, the one thing you have to remember is we've got a very big backlog right now of over 4,400 aircraft. So if I don't sell anything for the next couple of years, production lines can continue running. A lot of people think that you're placing an order and you ramp up production and six months later the airplane comes out the line. It's closer at times to six years later. So we're ramping up slowly. We ramp down slowly when we have to. The order cycle goes up and down and up and down. In the past, this industry, the production cycle has followed that, which is chaos in Europe. Uh, it creates chaos in America, but you can get away with it because sometimes your labor will just go salmon fishing in Seattle for a year and then come back and work on airplanes again. But I don't think it's efficient for either Seattle or Europe to do it. What we should do is try to balance that order book so we can have smooth ramp ups, plateaus, continue ramp up, and not this up and down that you see in the order cycle. So we are very conservative in our production. We could perhaps go to 44 a month on the single aisle, but there's a lot of strain on the production line right now, so we're prudently trying to stay at 42, and so we have the confidence that we can really get to 44. Only one part missing keeps the aircraft from being delivered. How do you see the industry really changing over the next 10 years? Well, this is a growth industry. Every 15 years, it's doubled in size. Back when that old 747 down there entered service 40 years ago, there were about a half a trillion revenue passenger kilometers around the world being flown every year. Today, there's five trillion. That's 10 times increase. In 20 years, it's gonna be 12.8 trillion. It's gonna be more than double, two and a half times bigger. Now, what does that mean? We can't keep increasing the number of flights. We can't do this crazy thing some people go to, let's all just fly point to point. Well, that's what we do in private aircraft, and we know that's pretty good if you don't mind spending an awful lot of money per mile flying. But for the rest of us, flying on business, flying on pleasure, flying back and forth to see our families, that's gonna be done from hub to hub. Those are getting congested today. The only way to do it is with bigger aircraft, more fuel efficient aircraft, and quieter, more environmentally friendly aircraft. Who is really winning this rivalry between Boeing and Airbus? Well, there are two manufacturers out there, uh, 100 seat aircraft and above. And there's a reason for that. This is highly complex technically intensive and capital intensive. Now, how many manufacturers around the world of cars are there? How many manufacturers of computer, cell phones, TV sets, which aren't easy to build, but there, there are hundreds of them out there if you add them all up, yet there are only two manufacturers of commercial aircraft in this four trillion dollar market. So we get to know each other. In fact, I spent last weekend uh, at an interesting function with uh, the CEO of, uh, of Boeing and the, uh, the new commercial director, et cetera. These are, you know, pleasant people to deal with. But I have the better aircraft. So it makes my job a lot easier. <laughs> John Lee of Airbus, we thank you very much for joining. We'll see you now.